What's up guys, Chris here with Rooted. At Rooted, we exist to help you and others like you learn to play the music that you love by coaching you on the why and not just the what. Now in today's video, we have something really special for you. We're gonna teach you about the key of G on piano, show you its scale and its chords, and then we're gonna apply those chords in this amazing worship song called It Is Well from Bethel. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so you're really not gonna to wanna to miss this. Now if you enjoyed the teaching day, I'd love for you to check out our YouTube channel where you're gonna see videos like this and others, some great content, great teaching from me and some other coaches. Don't miss it. Go ahead and click subscribe on our YouTube channel and get started playing some more music that you love today. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, y'all, so I'm really excited to jump in here with you today, uh, learning the key of G, it's scaling its chords, and applying that within the song, uh, it is well. It's going to be a lot of fun here today, so let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So every single key of music is just a group of notes uh, that sound really good together. And so if you, uh, it, it, to get the best idea, the best illustration for really how music works and how a key works, um, let's look at just a piano. And so you see a mixture on the piano of white and black keys, right? So there's 88 different notes you could choose from uh, on a normal size piano, a uh, mixture of white and black notes. And so really what we do then is a key just kind of narrows down um, the idea and the mindset that we choose keys from. It narrows it down from all these 88 keys to just a select few to actually seven different notes that we can play with in any given key. And so, um, for instance, the key of C major is one group of notes that sound good together, and it has one rule. And the one rule about the key of C is that you can't play any white, any black notes on the piano. So every white note is fair game. Likewise, the key of G has one rule as well, but the one rule about it is that you have to sharp every single F. And so here's an F right here. And that F right there, we're going to sharp it, which means we're going to move it from F to the very next note to the right, which is F sharp. Okay, so there's our F sharp. So every single note has to be sharped in the key of G. Every single F has to be sharped in the key of G. And so as we play um, in the key of G, we need to know a couple things. We know its scale, which gives us a map of the key. And then we, from there, we derive the chords, which is what we use to play any worship song, any song in general in the key of G. So let's jump right into the scale. So the key of G's scale is gonna start on G. We'll start with our thumb on that G. And then the second note, and there are seven different notes we'll play in this in this scale, just so you're aware. So there's our G, that's our one. Our two is A with your pointer finger. Three is B with your middle. Thumb is going to cross underneath uh, that middle finger to play C with your uh, thumb, and that's your fourth note. D is our fifth note with your pointer. E is our sixth note with your middle. F sharp is your seventh note with your fourth, and G is your eighth note with your pinky. All right, that's our G major scale. So that's your map. Every note in between here is fair game. That one F we have to sharp. All right, those are our notes in the key of G. Now, from there we get the chords in the key of G. So this is our one chord, all right? The reason why it's our one chord is because chords are built off the first, third, and fifth notes of any scale. So first, third, and fifth note right there. There's our one chord. From there we just move our hand up one note and we get our two chord. Up, up one note again, we have our three chord, our B minor. That F, remember we have to sharp. There's our B minor. Four is C major. Five is D major. Six is like this, E minor, and seven is our F sharp diminished. <clears throat> we won't be using that one in this song, but just it's good to know. So from there then, we can jump into a chord chart. And a chord chart is just a map of the song, all right? So at the very beginning, we see the name, it is well. We see that we're in the key of G. This is called a time signature. We're not gonna jump into that too much or dive too much into that, but just know that means uh, four, four time, means we have four beats in every single measure. And then our tempo is 65 beats per minute, which is a relatively slower tempo. This right hand over left hand part, don't worry about it yet. It's gonna make more sense a little bit later. So as we jump in, then we see the different sections. We see an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, a bridge, and a chorus. Those are just the different sections of the song that we're going to break uh, the song down into. All right, and then from there, we see our chords. We see our numbers here, and each number has an implication for each hand. The one we see at the beginning means the right hand's going to play a one, and the left hand's going to play a one chord. So both of them are going to do that, but it won't look quite what, like what you think. And so that's kind of what I'm here to explain. Um, from there, uh, I want just to kind of talk to you briefly about how many beats each number is going to hold. So when you see a number all by itself, like this six here all by itself, you can assume that's going to receive four beats, all right? Each number all by itself stands for like a measure, all right, which is a, just a unit of a song. So each number by itself receives that first number right there, which is a four, all right? Um, from there, though, we have some split measures going on. Anytime we have a number dash another number and it's underlined, that means that whole underlined portion is one measure. So we see a one there. That one, a lot of times we break 
these uh, measures down into half, so we just split them, right? So one would be two beats, five would be two beats, but we have something different kind of going on here. In this one to five chord change, we, we are actually um, encountering a three, four measure. So most of the song is in four, four time, but in this measure, there are only three beats. So we have to split the one and the five between those three beats. They won't be split evenly. The one is gonna receive two beats and the five is gonna get one. And you'll see that same thing right here. The same thing now will happen in the verse and in each verse section. I won't notate that though, because we've already talked about it. I just wanted to make you aware of that. So as I play through it, you'll see for sure what's going on there. Um, the last piece of the puzzle here is understanding what this means, right hand over left hand. We are going to see some what's called one over four chords, one over five, one over six, and that kind of thing. All that means, is, and I'll explain this more later, is that your right hand's playing what's to the left of the slash, and your left hand plays what's to the right of the slash. And so if you keep that in mind as we're playing through this, it's gonna make a lot of sense. So what I really recommend as I'm teaching this is to even take a notebook, take some notes, maybe print off this chord chart that I have. You're gonna see that in a link underneath the actual video here on YouTube. Um, print, print out that this chord chart and just take some notes as I'm talking through it because there's a lot of nuance with this song. I mean, it's not just as simple as seeing the chords and boom, going right through them all in root position. Um, what we're going to be doing is a, is pretty specific and it's, and it's definitely nitpicky, um, but it's good because we're going to eventually play this song exactly like, um, like the actual recorded version, which is pretty cool. So the last piece before we jump in is I want to show you the difference um, between uh, some different chords here. So here is, uh, here's our one chord, a G major chord, right? Um, every chord has three versions, has three ways we can play it. We, we can play it in what's called root position, just like this, where all of our fingers are evenly spread. We could play it in first inversion, like this, meaning we've actually just flipped the notes around. The G was at the front, but now it's at the end. We're still playing the same three notes, so it's still a one chord, it's still a G major chord, but it's now in first inversion. Or we can play it like that in second inversion. And these are called different voicings, all right? These gives us a, th these inversions give us a different way to present the chord in a different section. Sometimes we use them to add dynamics, sometimes we use them because they sound more cohesive um, whenever we're moving between chords. But what you're gonna notice is that where we start, our hands are not gonna move too far from. Uh, we're gonna keep our hands in a very similar spot throughout the song. Uh, because that's really how you make songs sound really good and um, you get the best voicings whenever you try and make the song sound cohesive. So keep an eye on that as we move forward and I'll be explaining that as we go. So the first chord we see here is a one. The way we're going to play this one with our right hand is just G and B. If we were to play the full chord, we'd get that. We're just losing the D. Our left hand is going to play uh, what's called fifths of the one chord, all right? It's gonna lose the B, it's just gonna play the G and D. So together we get that. Now remember that one gets two beats, so essentially we're holding it for one, two, but here's how we're doing it. Our left hand's gonna play what's called a broken chord. It's gonna offset those, one and two. All right, that's how we're playing that one chord, one and two. Right hand's playing quarter notes, one, two, and left hand plays eighth notes, one and two. Eighth notes are just twice the speed of quarter notes, so one and two. From there, we move right to the five, and the five we're playing with our right hand just like this. All right, we're losing the D part of the five chord and just playing the top two notes, and our left hand is covering that D right where it is, okay? And then we're just gonna hold on that one for one beat. Remember, because those two uh, numbers, the one and the five, are part of a three, four measure. One, two, get my pedal here, one, two, straight to five for beat three. And then we're going to six, which we're gonna play like this. One, two, three, four. Remember our sixth chord are these three notes. We're just playing the top two notes of that one and our left hand is playing fifths action again, just like the one chord did. So the whole intro, at least the first part, two, three, four. The second half now, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the last two beats of that sixth chord right up here are being played with a G and a D. Um, that's more or less just a passing note. We don't need to really document that on the chord chart. Um, we're kind of moving from a sixth chord to a one chord there in the right hand just to note that. <clears throat> all right, so from there, then we go to the verse section, all right? And the verse is going to be played much like that intro, all right? We got some offsetting notes here in the left hand. Straight to the five, then to the six. And on this beat three, we hold that for beats three and four. One, two, three, four. Do the same thing for the next pass. One, straight to five, six, two, three, four. Here's the third pass now, which would be right here. 
straight to five, six. This one, we just play all four beats, fourth pass. One, two, hold, two. And then from there, so first one intro are really, really similar as far as how their chords are composed. Really not, not too much going on there, not, nothing, nothing too crazy. The pre-chorus, then we kind of get to some of our, our nuance here. So we have a one over four. Here's a one without that B in the middle, and here's a four. All right, a left hand on the four. We're just adding the fifth above it, all right? But what we're doing is with this one over four in the pre-chorus, we're adding kind of like a passing note here like we talked about earlier. That's gonna be what our right hand does for every single chord here in the pre-chorus. That's what our one means. We're just adding that quick F sharp passing note and then resolving it right up to the one. So the, this, the right hand in coordination with the left hand looks like this. That's your four right there. All right, for some reason my G is cutting out on me sometimes. All right, that's our four. And our left hand, again, is going to the fourth note of that G scale, the C. And we're adding the fifth above it. All right, right hand's just doing that passing note. And then we're going to our five. Same thing there, and then to our six. Hold for two, do that same thing again. One, two, three, four, one, two, hold, two. Now with these chords right here, they are a, they are a very evenly split measure, two beats and two beats, okay? Now we're on the third pass right here, the one over four, to the five, to the six. And that one we're playing all four beats. And then here we have a one sus two over five, which is gonna look like that. Now every one chord, every chord in general can be suspended. That's what the word, that's what the little uh, shortened word SUS stands for, sus, is suspended. Uh, we, whenever we suspend a chord, we take a normal like, one chord like this and we can move and we move the middle note either up to the fourth note or down to the second note of the scale. So if we had a one sus two, we'd be moving the third to the second. If we had a one sus four, we'd be moving the third to the fourth. Make sense? So that's our, that's our one sus two over a five. And then we just play a regular five at the end. So two beats, one, two, one, two. And this is a five chord in first inversion, like we talked about earlier. There's root position, there's first inversion, okay? So that last little bit. It's our one sus two dash five. And then we get back to the turnaround again, which is the turnaround is exactly like the intro, just about anyway. Play this all the way through, one again. Quick five, one, two, hold, two. Instead of going up to G and D, just keep the G and B there. So it's a true six chord. And then from there, we're going into verse number two, okay? This verse number two is gonna be the same way that we did <clears throat> verse number one with one exception. The one exception is we're not holding for beats three and four like we did in verse one. In verse one, we did this. One, two, hold, two, right? In this case, we're just going one, two, three, one, two, three, four, just playing them straight through. So that one's pretty self-explanatory, real easy. From there, we go to the pre-chorus, okay? In the pre-chorus, see the same thing again. We have a one over four, one over five, and then a one over six. We have a one over four, one over five, one over six again, another one over four, one over five, one over six, then a one sus two over five, and then the only difference here between this pre-chorus two and this first pre-chorus is that this guy has kind of been changed to this now, right? So now we kind of extended it a little bit. So our pattern is still like this. We still have this action. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's still our one over four, or one over four dash five, and then the one over six. Um, but the end, the one sus two over five, all we're doing is this. So there's our one sus two. We just hold that for four counts and play all the way through that four count. One, two, three, four. Then that brings us to this measure. One, two, and release that suspension there. Okay, just like we did up here. Then from there, that takes us to the bridge. All right, the bridge is real easy. Um, we're gonna go from the one chord which the one chord now 
we're gonna do this. In first inversion, we're just losing the D, all right? So there's our one chord, we're just gonna lose the D, just play the B and the G for the one. Left hand's gonna do the same thing that it's done before. There's our one. And then we go to what's a five over seven. Remember, think right hand over left hand. So right hand does the five. We're gonna do the five in second inversion, just losing the D. And left hand's gonna play a seven, which is an F sharp. We're gonna add the five in there to make it a true five over seven. So we got one, five over seven, no D in the middle. And then we go straight to a six chord, which this looks exactly like the one. It's, it is, I mean, it's the one chord as well when you just take those two notes. Um, but it's also the six chord because the six chord is E, G, and B. We're just taking the G and the B and flipping them around, G and B, B and G. Over the six, straight to the four. Now the four looks a little more regular. We're just losing the E there, we're just doing fifths on this four chord. Same thing in the left hand as all the other notes so far. So our one, five over seven, six, four. All right, that's how we're gonna do the bridge there all the way through um, to the very end where you're gonna see a one over four right here, okay? All that's gonna change there is we're going six to one over four. All right, that's more or less a one chord. We're just kind of changing that true four to a one over four, okay? Now, don't ask me why that they did that. Um, again, that's more or less just like a different voicing of the chord. It's like a four sus two kind of thing going on there without the C, which our left hand's kind of covering the C there. So it's like a four sus two thing going on there. Um, and, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason why they decided to add just that one or make just that one a one over four. Um, they just wanted to because they thought it sounded better and this it sounded a little bit different and kind of broke up the monotony of just the same thing over and over. And and as you get used to playing these kind of songs, you're just gonna realize a lot of these chords just repeat and a lot of the way that you play them is just it's just kind of monotonous, right? And so you want to just break up that monotony by throwing in something different that sounds good and just kind of changes your ear a little bit. Uh, as as a, as far as what you're used to, and so that's that's really the whole reason why. I mean, there's there's really no like I couldn't tell you like this is why like music you know from a music theory perspective why they did that. It's just more more or less like that's what they wanted to hear. And so as you get into playing this type of music, that's what you just want to be. You want to be thinking about that stuff and thinking like how can I take some of these tendencies and some of these things that I've seen someone else do and incorporate that into my own playing. Like that's really where some of this stuff takes off really in your own personal playing. It's huge huge when you take tendencies that we see in other people and then we apply them in our own life. And that's really why we, we kind of teach the number system and why we come around it in this really expansive manner. We're not just going to show you how to play the song, like give you tutorials straight through. We're going to really get into the why because the why is really the true nature of how you play anything, right? It really allows you then to play your own songs and really everything we learned today kind of goes above and beyond um, just the song it as well. It goes, it goes well into any worship song in the key of G. So really good stuff here. I'm super excited to keep moving forward. So um, from there, the very ending is just one, like we talked about, to seven, to six. Hold that for four counts. Six. Hold that last six for four counts. No quarter notes on that. Then we go to chorus here. And our chorus is going to be played the four without the C in the middle. So we're doing what's called a sixth interval. And our left hand is kind of doing the same thing. You get a little D passing note in the middle. So this first four is going to receive four counts. This next one is going to receive three counts. Now this four dash five is a split measure, but it's not an evenly split measure. This one gets three beats. This one gets one. Okay. We're going to see that again right here and here, here and here. Um, even this six dash five, these are not going to be evenly split measures. They're going to be uneven. So three up front, one beat in the back. So this four chord, one, two. Three, beat four, one, two, three, to the five, and then straight to the six. Another four beats on the six. Straight to the four now. Beat four to the D, another four for three beats, to the five, to the six, for eight counts. Then we go down here to line two. Boom, 
passing note. Two, three, beat four to the six. Three beats here. Five to the four. Then the five sus four is gonna look like this. All right. So remember our, our sus action. This is our five chord. If we were to sus four this chord, that means we move the middle note to the fourth note of the D major scale. Flip these notes around once, flip them again, just remove the D, and that's our five sus four because we got the D in the left hand. Two beats on that five sus four, two more on that regular five, and then we go to six here. Another four beats right here. Now we enter line three. Here's the four. We're going to do octaves now. To the five, six. Three beats here. Five over three. So this is our five. This is our third note in the G scale. One, two, three. And back to our four. For four counts. To the five right here, then the six. Kind of does a little F sharp there, then back to the six there. Five over three. Then we're in line four here. To the five, to the six. Five over three right here. Four beats here, then the five sus four, same way we did it before. Another six chord. Another four beats. Getting to the last line now, the four, the same way we did it. Two, three, four, to the five chord. To the six. To the five over three, to the four. Five sus four. Release that five. And then the one chord, we're gonna play like that. One chord is in first inversion, we're losing the D. Left hand doing fifth of the one. Just like that. And that's all there is to it. That's the whole song in as well. So I hope you really enjoy going through this. Just remember, like as we teach the why um, behind all this stuff, like this applies to more than just um, this song it as well. It applies to every single song in music and even learning the key of G and the number system and all that stuff, learning these tendencies, it's huge. This is going to go well beyond just this one song. So thanks so much for taking a look at this today. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video today. I hope you enjoyed learning it as well. I hope you really enjoyed also learning how we can take what we learned today and apply it to other worship songs and even songs as you create. So if you enjoyed the teaching today, I'd love for you to check out our monthly membership program where you get access to courses and content just like this on a daily basis for a very low affordable monthly price. It's an amazing opportunity that you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead and click the link below and get started in our monthly membership program with us today. We look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you.